Hello and welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video we are going to do some exposure blending using luminosity masks with the TK panel plugin. So we're going from this shot to this one. If you want to follow along you can find the needed raw files in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Before we head into Photoshop of course we have to do the basic raw adjustments. And since we are doing an exposure blending, we're going to merge two different images right here. This one is exposed for the shadows, while this shot includes all the details we need for the highlights. I am going to apply the base raw adjustments on this image first. So let's begin by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, which will just flatten the image some more. So we do have a bit less contrast. Next up, I'm heading into the basic tab. Here I do want to adjust the white balance a little bit, making this shot a little colder. I do want to have some more natural color tones so we don't get overwhelmed by all those yellow colors. All right, so bringing down the temperature helped a lot. Still, I do want to introduce some more tint, reducing the overall green tones of the image, but that looks pretty good so far. Since we're going to do an exposure blend, we don't really need to adjust the exposure in the raw adjustments. So I can go ahead and just add a little bit of texture and reduce the clarity since I'm aiming for a soft look, just like that. I'm also not touching the vibrance or saturation and I'm not going to apply any masking on this shot. Also, I don't even think I have to color grade much here since the colors are quite good as they are right now. However, I'd like to head into the calibration tab and here I just want to bring down the green primary hue and bring up the saturation here. All right, that looks good. Now that we have edited this base image, I want to copy those settings to the bright shot. So I'm going to hold down the shift key to select the second image, right click, synchronize settings, make sure to check all and hit OK. So we have the same settings on this brighter image as well. However, this shot is a little too bright, even for the shadows. So I want to head into the basic tab here and just bring down the exposure a notch. That is looking much better. Still, I think the colors are a bit too overwhelming here. So I'm also going to bring down the vibrance, but that's looking really good so far. Now with the raw adjustments out of the way, let's select both images and hit open objects. Here you can see I have stacked both images on top of each other with the darker shot being on top. So let's do the exposure blending. As I said, I'm going to use the TK panel plugin. If you don't have this plugin, there is another way to do that. Simply turn off the visibility of the top layer, apply a layer mask on it. With the layer mask selected, head over to image. Here, choose apply image. And without changing any settings, just hit OK. Now, if I turn back on that layer, you can see we have nicely blended those two images. However, I don't want to do it this way. As I said in the intro, I want to use the TK panel plugin, which is a paid plugin, but there's also a free version available with less functions, of course. Again, we are starting by deactivating the darker layer on top, then make sure to check the layer mask box and hit composite. Now we can turn back on the visibility of that layer and see we do get pretty much the same result as with apply image. However, I do want to adjust that mask a little more. So I'm going to select the layer mask, then grab the brush tool by pressing B. I think the shadows in the distance could use some more highlights, so I'm going to switch the foreground color to black, but I'm also making sure to use a lower brush opacity, just like around here maybe. And then I'm just brushing there in the distance, brightening up the shadows there. I think that looks really good already. We could maybe paint in some blacks on top, making the top part brighter as well. I just want to prevent overexposure, but that's looking really good. Actually, I think I need to introduce some more dark tones again. So let's just switch the foreground color to black. And here, especially in the foreground, I think it makes sense to have a very, very dark area. 
just getting some contrast in here maybe even darker tones in the distance i think that looks much much better than before you see you just have to play around a little bit until you find something that looks pleasing to you that means going back a few steps at a time but i'm pretty happy how things are looking now at this point let's add a little bit of glow or sunlight coming in from the right side so here for i'm using a new layer and let's switch the blending mode to soft light grab the brush tool again and make sure to use a warm color tone i try to pick some from the image that's a little too saturated so let's bring it to the left all right again let's bring down the brush opacity since we don't want to overdo this effect and then i'm just painting in a little glow not much just a little bit but that looks great next up let's work on some light rays coming in from the right side as well for that reason i am going to use a special brush but first off again i'm using a new layer then let's go into the brush menu let's see there are some rays of light as you can see i do want to find a light ray with an angle of about 45 degrees like this i'm going to switch the orientation just like that and let's adjust the brush size and give it a try it actually works pretty good i'm going to paint in a few times with different sizes trying to give this a very natural look of course and maybe even change up the opacity of the brush but that's looking really really good now of course the right side looks very very unnatural now we want to change that as well so let's create a layer mask and switch the brush back to the circular one and adjust the brush size and increase the brush opacity now since we want to erase parts of those light rays i'm going to switch the foreground color to black and let's zoom in a bit now it doesn't make sense those light rays are overlaying those trees so that's the first thing i want to remove so I'm just painting over the trees right there. Just adding some more depth this way. I'm not sure why Photoshop always applies spacing to the brush. I'm always setting it back to 0%. That's really bothering me at this point. All right, first tree is done. Now there's some stuff going on in the back that I want to remove as well. So we could bring down the brush opacity to have some light coming in still from that side. But I want to pretty much get rid of the far right side here. All right, that looks super cool. So at this point, I think I want to try add a new layer again. And let's go with this brush once more just adding a little more color here that means i'm going to bring the foreground color more to the right side and again let's drop the brush opacity and let's paint in a few more times in here okay now let's go back to the layer mask thing change the brush again and increase the brush opacity and again try masking out stuff actually we could copy the layer mask from below so i'm just going to hold the control key and click on that layer mask select the upper layer mask again hit shift f5 and select black and hit ok uh that's that selection was inverted no problem though we're just going to select the layer mask and hit ctrl i perfect quite happy with those light rays i don't want to overdo it so i think it's better to stop at this point i do think however i need to adjust the upper layer mask some more so i'm going to use a black brush again and here i'm going to paint over the right side once more because it looks weird with those strong light rays between those leaves at this point i do think i want to check out the nick collection plugin so let's merge all those layers 
Actually, no, I'm not going to merge those layers. I'm going to use the TK panel plugin once more. And here I'm going to select merge visible, which just merges all the layers below it into one single layer, which I can now use to go through the NIC collection plugin. All right, so let's see what we got here. First off, I do want to try the brilliant swarm effect and just play around with the warp, which I think looks kind of weird in this case. Maybe make it even colder. I think it looks better at least. So let's go with a little reduced warmth here. All right, then I do want to add another filter this time. Go with the classical soft focus for a dreamy look. Of course, the first method might be a bit too strong. So let's go through the other methods real quick. I think the second one looks great, but of course still a bit too strong. So let's bring down the strength just like that. Okay, now let's go back to the brilliant swarm effect one more time and just bring up the saturation a notch. All right, and I think we can apply it like that. And I guess here we have the final image. So I hope this Photoshop tutorial was helpful and interesting. I hope the exposure blending stuff was understandable as well as the light ray stuff. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.